Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Barcelona career mode. We're here again with our team and with the youngsters that we have now brought into the squad, with the failed wonder kids that we've just recently added, and with a new least life coming into this career mode, in my opinion. I am extremely excited about recording today. I will be recording a bunch of episodes today, so I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Tomorrow, I get to finally see parents again i'll be uh, driving over to them and spending a week with them so i'm really excited about it so you guys get the content pre-recorded ahead of time just pure content already going towards your way you know what back in the day i used to actually like record my career modes in bunches right i had like episode after episode just recorded and then i would edit them time after time but ever since i've been including comments all the time i've always gone like daily right just record an episode wait for the comments wake up the next day, look at the comments, and then go ahead and record the next episode with your guys' input. So it feels weird to me right now to not have your instant input on the episode, but I really hope you guys enjoyed episode 20. It was a great time. I had such fun recording that one. And if you are enjoying today's episode as well, make sure to hit that like button and keep on supporting the videos. It means the world to me, guys. Let's keep this incredible support up. For fan objectives, we have some progress in certain areas. International power, I still don't know yet because the players haven't been called up to international games, so we have no clue there. Failed won the kids for the reserves team. We have won one game, as you guys know. We have beaten Olympiacos with our team in the Champions League, which is exceptional. Um, for career revival of Halilovic, we are on 1 out of 10 so far. Golden boots for the Champions League, we don't know yet, obviously. Uh, pure growth is a new objective that I've just added in, which is an objective in which, we, in which we have to get a minimum of 100 overall growth in my entire squad. So far, we have plus 24 growth within the entire squad. So I think it's a good objective to go after to try and get people on good form and to focus on the entire team rather than just one specific player. So that is a new objective that we have just added in. We need to focus on the growth of our team. And now we need to focus on the biggest opponent in our Champions League group stages. Inter is coming up right here in September to finish off the month. It's a big game for us, which I'm not going to play with the reserves team. It's an important one. Lautaro Martinez and Lukaku are going to be up against Todibo and Zakaria. I'm looking forward to that matchup. And I'm also looking forward to the matchup of Munir against Zula, Stones, Ginta. Fatih and Trincao will have to help him out big time in this game. Let's see how we do. As mentioned, I am back in love with the career mode and I hope you guys are as well. I don't know how it has like worked out in the last episode pretty much. I think it was episode 19 that was uploaded. Um, the last one that I saw reactions to um, compared to what where I am at right now in terms of recording this episode. Today, it's going to be episode 20 uploaded basically as uh, I'm recording this. It's just confusing isn't it i probably shouldn't talk about it but anyways i have seen really good reactions uh, considering the failed wonder kids that we have brought into the team the likes of halilovic the likes of embolo people really like what we have done so um i am very happy to see that type of reaction and i would be happy to get a goal in here the likes of pedri Trincao, munir i need him to be top scorer if possible either him or ansu fati ansu fati gets through oh too much space and so they messed up in the defense. Who was that? Inter have bottled it. At, but in between the center backs, I don't know who it was, but they have made a mistake. And Ansu Fati capitalizes on it instantly. His deadly finishing as an 89 rated attacker is just pure quality. He tried to get some space and then somehow picks the ball off of Stones in a really weird way. I still don't know how he managed to do that. And Niklas Sule just misses it by inches. The new number 10 of Barcelona. Messi's... Um, he steps into Messi's footsteps, so to say, for us. And uh, he has been good, man. He's been very good. First season, if you guys remember, he had like over 40 goal contributions. At the age of, what, 16, 17? It's crazy. Also, yesterday, the Champions League draw happened. And I am extremely satisfied as a Liverpool fan. I really am. Out of all the teams that were in the Champions League, I wanted either Porto or Real Madrid. And some people might be like, why would, why in the hell would you want Real Madrid? I just think all the other teams that are within the Champions League at the moment are in a better form than 
uh, Liverpool anyways. So I need to come up against teams that are either not better than Liverpool anyways in terms of their starting lineup, which is Porto, right? Uh, let's be real. Juventus losing to them is a big upset and they should have gone through. But I think Porto was definitely the team that everyone kind of wished for in the Champions League and Chelsea got them. Chelsea is going to be up against Porto. I think Chelsea will manage to get past them. Um, but if they don't, I'll be happy because the the winner out of the Chelsea-Porto game actually then plays against the winner of Liverpool and Real Madrid. So I wanted Real Madrid, uh, first of all, because of Salah, Ramos, that type of situation. I would love to see some kind of um, extra reason to play well, right? I think it's going to push the Liverpool players a, a little bit further ahead, knowing that they have lost the Champions League final against that Real Madrid team. As Lukaku comes up with an incredible finish there, man. He lobs it up and hits it on the volley just like Thierry Henry. That's such a good finish from Lukaku. And Inter are back into it. It's 1-1 and I'm not happy with that. But uh, we'll carry on and try our best. Lukaku flexing into the camera. I see you, pal. I see you. Well, we'll see, man. There's still plenty of time to be played. But yeah, I hope that Liverpool can get past Real Madrid. And if they do so... Porto or Chelsea. I'm not scared of any of those teams. I'm fully aware that we have not have not been doing well against Chelsea this year, especially since Tuchel has come in. It wasn't a great game that we played against them, but um, I still do highly believe that against Chelsea, with a fully fit squad, apart from the likes of obviously Van Dijk and Joe Gomez, and potentially even Matip, I, I, I'm very confident because Champions League is different, man. It is a different situation. It's a different mindset. And Liverpool have gained so much experience in the past years and finales. We've gone into back-to-back -back Europa League final, Champions League final, Champions League final. I mean, we're, we're here. We're here to stay. We're here to try and win this trophy. And it would be an exceptional season if Liverpool somehow could get past First of all, Real Madrid, then get past the winner of Porto and Chelsea, which is not really an un unrealistic thing. Um, I think that Real Madrid is the bigger opponent there, personally speaking. Um, and then if we could come up against an opponent that isn't going to destroy Liverpool, if someone can beat Man City along the way, that'd be very much appreciated. So hopefully, as a Liverpool slash Bayern Munich fan, we will see a Bayern Munich Liverpool finale, and then I have automatically won in life. So let's see how that goes for me. Trincao! Oh, that was the shot. <laughs> okay, I'll take that, I guess. Oh, Hakimi somehow making his way through. I don't like this at all. That's a goal. It's a goal. 2-1 it is. Inter have scored another one. And it is Verratti, I believe, that scores the goal for Inter. The Italian has returned to Italy. Back from PSG over into the Inter squad. And he manages to score... The second goal here. This is not ideal, man. I need more goals and I for sure need at least one point out of this game because this group stage that we have is not easy. It's not an easy one. I can see ourselves struggling uh, in getting out of it if we don't get at least one point out of this game. Time for changes. Bazour is coming off. He's extremely tired. Onyeka coming on there. Um, Kluivert has had an impact lately. So we're going to bring him on instead of uh, Munir and then Fatih goes up to striker. And uh, for the rest of the team, we could make more changes, but I don't really feel comfortable doing so. Maybe maybe Fernandes for Puj to bring a little bit more physicality into midfield. All right, here we go. Mateusz Fernandes now carrying the ball forward, as he always does in a very, very physical way. For some reason, stopped sprinting, even though I held down the button. I don't know what just happened there. Inter, good tackle, good tackle again. Somehow they keep going. I've tried my tackles and I've tried defending Todibo. Well done there. That was clutch from Todibo. Here we go with Mateos Fernandez. Now I'm asking for him to make that run for me. Trincao. Make that run diagonally inside. Yes. Ansu Fati in the center. And that's the one. The equalizer in the 78th minute. Ansu Fati showing himself as the one man to go for. For the objective of the golden boot in the Champions League. Two goals against Inter. Very good performance from the man that used to play on that left-hand side for us in this game to start off with. Then moved into the center and showcased his striking abilities. In the perfect position at the right time, Niklas Zule just doesn't possess the acceleration to keep up with him. He does have the top speed, but not the acceleration. And that just shows in the first couple of meters, we ran away from him. And that was very useful for that cross from Tinkao.
Oh, God. What a ball from Lukaku, please. That's insane. That's such an incredible pass from Lukaku. I Can I even do anything there? I honestly don't think I can. That's an in incredible, incredible pass from Lukaku, who just showcases that they might just be a level above us, man. We don't seem to be ready. What a run from Lautaro. Finished off with a perfect pass from Lukaku. We might lose this game, man. It looks like we will. Lukaku again. Lukaku's playing like freaking Xavi, man. What's going on here? There he is again. He's at the number 10 role for some reason. Look at him. Okay. Last chance, maybe. Nope. The game is done. We have no chance. Inter have beaten us. It's an eye-opening experience to see how good a team like Inter is. They have exceptional attackers who are pure quality. Lautaro Martinez and Lukaku just showcased us that defensively, we need to pay more attention to through balls. We have not been good enough in defending those. Ansu Fati tried his best, but it wasn't good enough. So after two games of Champions League football, we're still only on three points. And Inter have showcased here that we are not the top favorites in this group. It is definitely themselves. Osasuna coming up next now. It's an interesting matchup for us. I mean, obviously, I'm not too happy with the performance in that last game. But Osasuna is ninth at the moment. And we don't have any game coming up. So this should, technically speaking, be a big dub for us. With the main squad capable of smashing them. And we do. Ansu Fati with two goals. He carries on. He has now four goals in two games. He's having great individual performances. I mean, the defense has held on there. We got the clean sheet, so that's a big dub straight away. Put us into the second spot right now behind Atletico Madrid. Joao Felix once again probably having a field day. No, it's actually Gerard Moreno that is doing well for Atletico Madrid. Joao Felix still with five goals just right in there. And Ansu Fati with five at number eight. So we got to do better in that sense. Um, but I am trying to build up a good form for our squad. And we do have Porto coming up which now turns into a must-win game for our team. Now, Real Betis is going to be a matchup that we are going to get past once again through simulating because I do want to play with the main squad in the Champions League. So this squad right here, the Youth Academy, is now going to be up against Betis. And I don't feel good about this one. I really don't feel good about this one. I do feel like the likes of Fekir and the boys could get an easy dub against our youngsters here. But maybe our youngsters can showcase some sort of strength in this matchup so here we go please can we get at least a draw it's a draw it is a draw and we only turn it into a draw by bad defending in the 81st minute Derun comes in and finishes it right there in the last 10 minutes of the game Kloivert had scored one and Mateusz has scored one again which is nice to see he's one of our former favorites in the career mode one of the big surprises so it's nice to see him get some play time again. I think a lot of you guys are enjoying that as well because he has been exceptional in that first season for us. Now, Porto, this is the one. We need to win this. We got to get at least second spot in this group stages. Um, I need that desperately. And for the youth squad, you can just see Revelli is slowly getting ready for that first team. I think he is going to be ready anytime soon. Once he goes up to 71, I think I'll promote him to the, to the senior squad. But uh, this Porto game now is more important than I thought it would be. But... Let's freaking do this, guys. Let's get a good result. Let's redeem ourselves from that bad performance that we just had and uh, get a big dub. Get a big dub for the team. Porto surprisingly first in the group stages so far, um, which showcases that this team is no joke. And the same has proven in real life. Porto getting past Juventus, I think, is something that no one really expected. I think a lot of people, including myself, still remember how uh, Ronaldo scored incredible goals against Porto in the past uh, playing for Manchester United, I remember, I remember him scoring that one insane long shot. I think it was uh, for United. If not, it was probably for Real Madrid. Whoa, I haven't seen that skill move in such a long time. Thanks for reminding me. Sometimes you see people do skill moves and you're like, oh, that thing still exists. <laughs> and uh, on competitor mode, we do see it even with the AI. That was a close call there. That could have been tough. But Ansu Fati, you need that run, please. There we go. That's the run, Ansu. Ooh, this could be an early goal. This could be an early goal if I didn't play the worst pass of all time. Go on then. No, that was for Pudge. Fatty, what are you doing? Zakaria, big steal. Come on now. Power your way through, Zakaria. Uh, even he is struggling with the strength against these lads. Oh, Munir. With the space given to him. Munir El Haddadi. I need that skill move. I need that finesse. Oh, that's exceptional. 
That's exceptional. In the 17th minute, Munir El Haddadi after Zakaria's incredible interception and the run on top of it and the assist on top of that. It's a quality finish that comes in for Munir. He does the skill move at the perfect time because the ball was quite ahead of himself. I thought the defender was about to get to it, but left-footed Munir is not going to miss that from that angle. He's 85 rated right now. He looks up, he aims, he hits it, and it goes straight into the back of the net. Perfect positioning of his body there. An easy finish for Munir, to be exact. It is what? His first goal in the Champions League. So, so far, he's not necessarily competing against Ansu Fati yet. Ansu definitely has more goals, but... If Munir can pull off an inc incredible performance here, it's looking good for him as well. Now, I see Fatih and I pass. That's how it works, right? I see Fatih and I pass the ball. Ansu Fatih now doing the same skill move as Munir. And you can tell if you don't have the perfect momentum going your way, the defender just catches it easily. Todibo, class tackle. Once again, one of our centre-backs stepping out of his position to get involved. Trincao, five-star weak foot now. That is... Perfect. Trincao, run to the camera. Show it. Show them who are the best fans in the world. It is these ones right here. No, actually, it was Porto fans in the background. Oops. I thought it was actually going to be showing our fans, but Trincao just wanted to show off and be an annoyance to the Porto fans by turning the camera and just standing in front of them like that. I've never seen that celebration before, but I love it. It shows the amount of confidence that Trincao has in his right foot there. They took that shot and the celebration shows that he has a lot of confidence or arrogance, I guess, <laughs> and now built up in himself. I mean, you got to believe in yourself, so I guess it's okay. Nice. Pedri, for once, defensively active. Can you believe it? Now, if we score this, this game is pretty much done. 3-0 would be deadly here. There we go. Ansu Fati. He wants one as well. All of the front three. He hits the crossbar. Everyone in the front three tries to score. Trinka and Munir have been able to do it. Fati not so much. Got really close though. You know what? There's a huge disconnect in the defense, uh, into the defensive midfield and the attack of Porto. There's a huge gap leading to them consistently just skilling around and messing around because they can't find the right passes. Munir, come on, bring it in. But I shouldn't I shouldn't have passed it. What am I doing? Clearly offside, man. I should have just taken the shot. That is a nice triangle, though, that we have just built up there. And Munir could potentially get onto the end of that one. And he does. Incredible pass from Trinko. And an even better finish from Munir. This game is done and dusted. Porto had their chances of trying to get in behind our defense, but they have failed miserably. Porto clearly way below Inter's level and not able to compete with our attack. We had too much pace going in behind, too much ability at the feet of Munir and uh, Trincao in terms of their finishing, and Porto is done. Marquesin in goal has seen three go past him, and he's not happy with it. So this game, we've done really well. Exceptional result for our team. Hopefully can keep that clean sheet and carry it over. There we go. It is a 3-0 victory. Despite three changes, Porto didn't manage to get any goals and we only had 36% possession. It just showcases we're not really playing the boss away at the moment. We're counter-attacking the hell out of our opponents. And we're using the abilities of our players to our advantage. The main team ain't ready right now for the matchup against Celta Vigo. Celta Vigo 15th only this season so far. And I would like to get a win. Um, Atletico otherwise could get a little bit further away from us. Which I don't want to see happen. But a victory here would be nice. Ah, it's a loss. It's a tough loss to take, but we're giving more and more playtime to the youngsters. And that's something that I do like to see. We want to share the game time uh, in between most of the players. And I think we're doing that really well right now. Um, Atletico Madrid have won their game, so that's not ideal. And this guy, I mean, is there any point in Hiroki Abe changing his development plan? I don't think so. Uh, we have some messages coming in. Vage as well. He's done with his development plan. And uh, Ray wants to come out of the... Uh, come out of the bench for the reserves team and take over a little bit. But Real Sociedad coming up next. I think this is the, these are games that we just have to go through and sim. Um, because as I said, this season is going to go a little bit faster than usual because I'm fully aware of the impact of the career mode on the channel. So uh, we're going to go and tell Pedri and the boys that they're fine to play. All good. And we get a scout report. Now, as I mentioned, I will reject all of these once again. Doesn't matter who it is, if it's a million or not, anyone is getting rejected. Just 
like the objective has said. But I think we can now stop doing that because I've been rejecting players for months now. So we can focus on regular stuff again. And uh, I expect the team to win here. I expect the team to win. They also see that only ninth in the league. And uh, we only have these types of games at the moment. We just got to get past them to get to the big games. But this is a must win. We have lost the last game and I need to win here. Gets in. Ansu Fati with another two. He has been exceptional today and I am loving it. You know what, guys? I think it's time to bring in Xavi Simmons. Yes, I think it is time to bring him over to Barcelona. Return the Wonder Kid into our team. He's now 73 rated which just showcases to me that he would be a, a good player for the reserves team. And I want him in the squad. 10 million for him. He's worth seven. Xavi Simmons will be returning into the Barcelona squad. And I'm very excited to be able to say so. He is definitely a little bit of a fan favorite in between a lot of people that are um, a career mode player. So we are going to get this man with the blonde hair into the squad immediately. He's obviously earning a lot of money, but he's going to be a prospect. I think that should be okay for him, which... Then again, doesn't require him to play every single game, which I like. Five-year contract, of course. This time around, you're going to stick around at Barcelona, my man. Xavi Simmons will join us as soon as the next transfer window opens. We're going to deny the release clause and we're going to give him about... I mean, I guess I'll give him the same amount that Paris Saint-Germain has given him. I'm not going to give him more. So 28k. Let's see how this goes, my man. Let's see what you say. 28,000. He was earning 28.5. He accepts less money to come back to Barcelona. We have done it. Xavi Simmons is joining back in into the Barca squad in January. He will return to his boyhood club and I think it's the only right thing to do. This guy belongs to Barca. Only a couple of days after the Sociedad game, we now have the um, the matchup against Espanyol and one day later we have Porto. What is that schedule? Not one day later, just three days later, but that means we will have to play the reserves team here against Espanyol, which are big derby opponents, right? Espanyol is a big derby opponent, but I genuinely believe that the team can pull off a victory here. So let's see how they do in this big matchup. I'm putting a lot of faith into this, into this youngster team, the failed Wonder Kids team, so to say. I need to see results. Otherwise, I, it seems like we might have to take over some games ourselves. They have Melendo in their team, which is one of my biggest flops in career mode transfers I've ever had. Uh, still remember that guy. He's trash, by the way. But here we go. Please. Yes. Come on. Larauri scores. Finally. He never scores in simulations. And Clovert got the goal in the 15th. And Bolo missed the penalty. Not an ideal situation. But we had more possession, more chances. And we now take more points out of this game in the derby of Barcelona. We do win with the failed Wonder Kids. Nothing better than that. That is two wins now for them. Get in. After the massive win against Porto, I fully expect my team to smack them around again. It was too easy. It was way too easy. So we're going to take this dub. Yes, 2-1. A little bit too close to comfort. And they had the lead. So thank God I didn't watch this. <laughs> it's a 2-1 win for our team. Inter has smacked Olympiacos around with five goals. We will have to play against Inter to try and get into that first position in the group stages. But we'll see what happens there. Currently in the league, guys, after all the games that we've played today... We are third, 24 points, same amount of points as Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid is on fire. 30 goals scored, 8 goals conceded, the best goal difference in the league by a country mile. And uh, they are doing really well, man. We got to we got to we got to keep it up. We got to keep it up and work better, work harder and get some more wins for our team. We do have some messages coming in. A you squad monthly report that we genuinely don't care about right now. Um, but we do have some messages coming in from important players of our team that are very happy about the playtime that they got there. But uh, let's take a look at the Champions League group stages and see where our team is standing there after the games today. So we are nine points now, just one point behind Inter. We need to get that sorted. I need that win against Inter in the second game so we can get easier opponents. Then Real Madrid and Dortmund are going through into the next round here potentially. Bayern and Olympique Lyon here in this group. Paris Saint-Germain and Atletico Madrid definitely going through here. Liverpool and Leipzig. Ooh, Liverpool with nine points and the rest is looking very bad there. Uh, United and Sociedad potentially. Maybe Sociedad Gladbach will have to fight it out. City and PSV. But one thing I can clearly tell you is that we need to get first because the first place teams and all these groups are actually really, really good teams and I'd rather play against a second place squad. So we need to win against Inter 
the next time we play against them. That is for sure. But before we do that, next episode, we have the matchup against Villarreal in the month of November. That's a big matchup for us because Villarreal is currently right below us there on 21 points. It's a must-win game. It definitely is a must-win game, and I will do my absolute best to get there. Uh, but in terms of growth, just a little update at the end of the epi. Lafont, 85. Uh, Scuffé has gone up by plus one. And let's just take a look at the highest rated players, uh, for example. Fati gone up to an 89 this season. Pedri with a plus two so far. Very nice to see that. Dinkar with a plus one. Zakaria has gone up a little bit. Rimaldo hasn't gone up yet, but he's already an exceptional player. Todibo slowly still improving, so that's good. Puj with a plus one. I need to see him grow more than that, personally speaking. Um, Munir with plus one. I hope he gets to at least an 88 this season. That is kind of my goal. Uh, because of the great season he had last year, I think his dynamic potential might have taken him further. At least I hope so. In terms of development plan, let's just quickly take a look at this. He definitely needs shorter for other things. So let's focus on... I do like his dribbling, but at times it does feel like his balance isn't that good. So we're going to go with target man here, improve his heading as well, because he is at the near post and he never gets the headers in. So that should take him a little bit shorter to grow. Atal now has a massive release clause in him, by the way. Um, it seems like a lot of teams are interested in him. I extended some of the contracts within our team. Mbolo, 82. Nice. Araujo gone up. Bazur up to an 81 now. Very good. Clovert hasn't gone up yet, despite good performances. And uh, Vage up to an 78. So the reserves team is doing all right. Even Halilovic is going up. Let's go. So that is a good roundup at the end of the epi. Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode of the Barcelona Career Mode. We have won a couple of games and lost one very important one. And uh, today, we also made sure that Xavi Simmons is coming back in the January transfer window. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. I will catch you next time when we're back with Villarreal. Peace!